Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review. This is a video that we put out each week here on the Dice Tower. We simply just give you an index of everything we've done the previous week, telling you our quick thoughts on the different games we reviewed. And then if you want to see the whole review to find out more details, click a link in the description below. Let's get started. Hey, hey, everybody, I'm Zeke Garcia. Here's what I reviewed last week. So I reviewed The Great Race, which I rated a 3 out of 10. It's a game that was very much overwhelmed by luck. And uh, the uh, main problem I had with the game was the end game scoring. At the end of this uh, uh, sort of, you know, race along the, the, the way, it's an all or nothing scoring. So if you do not make it into the final city, if you are one step away, you score absolutely nothing. I really wish the game had had some scoring kind of like uh, Jamaica in which getting close to coming all the way around the island will still get you points and you'll score the things you're holding in the game. In this game, you won't score your engine, though normally it scores. You won't score your money, though normally it scores if you make it in. So I found that to be really problematic. And then the luck along the way really compounds that issue for me. It made the game um, just lack really any fun. Um, I reviewed Alluvium, which I rated 6 out of 10. Alluvium is a, a roll and write kind of game. You're passing your sheet around the table. It's interesting. It's kind of quirky. Very uh, uh, different kind of game. It does have some problems near the end of the game in which you can clutch up and the uh, the boards become problematic because there's really not a whole lot of room to write in anymore. And you might even be just sort of skipping turns at the end of the game. Uh, but uh, and I do wish that the the pencils they include were a little more legible on the sheets. But the game is is clever. It's well put together. It's it's got some interest. So uh, I thought that one was uh, all right. And then I reviewed another roll and write called Bravo, which I rated an 8 out of 10. This is a follow-up kind of reworking of a game called Encore with more options, more interesting things to do along the way, different paths that you can follow. And it really is a very engaging roll and write. You can uh, choose to pursue so many different things to, to kind of follow one strategy or another. And then the order in which you do things, plus the things you do, uh, really kind of lead to a very different and interesting outcome. So I really enjoyed Bravo. And that's it for me. I will see you on the next one. Hey guys, Blake here. And this week I took a look at Bristol 1350. It's a very light deduction slash racing game for one to nine players where you are trying to get out of town before you get the plague. Or if you catch the plague, you are trying to infect all the other players so theme might not be for everybody but for what it is it worked really well for my group i thoroughly enjoy it it's an 8.5 out of 10. hey everyone this is chris this week i looked at uh mind management i gave this game a seven this was part of the four squares review i was kind of the person on the panel that I'm not as wild about hidden movement games, but this one had a lot of good puzzly aspects to it. I felt like good information was being given out pretty much every turn. There's something fun to do always being the agent looking for the person. Uh, I will say, however, that I had zero connection to the theme and not a lot of appreciation uh, as much for the artwork. And so that was kind of like an obstacle to get past, but good game. And then I took a look at Fast and Furious Highway Heist. This was uh, this is a game I gave a 7.5. I quite liked it. I did this review with Wendy, uh, my wife, and so if you want to go check that one out, make sure to watch that because we did a little fun intro. And this game is fun. This game is more fun almost than it deserves to be. Uh, you're going to make car crashy, boom, exploding noises and stuff. It has... A lot of good to it, even though the rules are a bit complicated for a Prospero Hall target kind of game. Uh, if you get past it, it's actually a very simple game. And then last up, I did a uh, I did a new series working with Storyboard Game, who is an Italian uh, visual director. He does really awesome videos, and he narrates them in Italian. So I've been starting to do the narration for those in English. So we've got that collaboration going up on the Dice Tower channel. So we've done a, a, a board game story video for Photosynthesis and for Last Aurora. So make sure you go check those out. They were originally called theatrical trailers, but uh, we decided it's better to call them board game stories because they're not exactly movie trailers. They could be a little longer or shorter, but go check those out. That's been my week. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael from the Nerd Shelves, and this week, Judy and I reviewed Gudetama, the Tricky Egg Card Game, which is a trick-taking card game based on a Japanese animation of the same name, Gudetama. Um, the game itself is, is quite fun, actually. It's a trick-taking game where each round 
players have seven cards and they play a card, and whoever wins the trick by playing the highest card gains those cards. But if you play your last card and win the trick, you have to score that card, and you don't want to score cards because the first person to get 21 points loses. It's quite a fun game. I like trick taking games. However, you could literally play this with a regular deck of playing cards. So for that reason, we only gave Gudetama a 6 out of 10. Hey everybody, this is Roy Kennedy, and this week I took a look at mindage management with the guys. This is a hidden movement game with all sorts of interesting art and like different aspects that you're trying to go around. It was a super fun game. I gave it a 7.5. And then I also did a review roundup where I took a look at a bunch of games that I played in the past and then gave you my thoughts on them because other people had done videos and reviewed them. Make sure to check that out. I had a funny little X-Files intro on it. I guess people said I had three intros on it, but it was a lot of fun putting that together and talking about games that I actually really enjoy and some that I don't enjoy as much. So make sure to check that out. And then also like always favorite game Friday. This week we talked about games that evoke emotion. So make sure to check out all of our contributors over there. And that has been my week in review. Hello everybody. This is Graham Anderson. And this week I looked at Botanic. Now this is a two player only game with a weird theme, but essentially it's about building a network of pipes. I like a lot of two player games but this one just didn't work for me. With five different color tiles and each game using all the tiles, it was too easy for each player to pick two colors and just build on those. So in your turn, it ended up being very obvious what you should do. Take the good tiles for yourself or bury the good tiles for your opponent. Just didn't enjoy this one and gave it a five out of 10. And that's it for this week. Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delicio, and this week I reviewed three games. First, I reviewed Hey Yo from Oink Games. I gave this a 7.5 out of 10. This is a cooperative, rhythm-based kind of speed timing game where you're playing cards to the table, trying to create uninterrupted uh, lines of symbols. A really fun game. I feel like it has a nice uh, balance between feeling a little bit of pressure without feeling frantic. I also reviewed Agropolis from Buttonshy Games. I gave this an 8 out of 10. This is a sequel to Sprawlopolis, an earlier game from them, which is a card laying on the table, trying to create patterns and scoring conditions. Each card has a scoring condition on the back. A really clever game. I like Sprawlopolis a lot, and Agropolis is basically the same game. You can actually combine the two with an expansion called Combopolis. Really clever solo uh, puzzle game. I also reviewed, for a four squares, Mind Management, which I gave an 8 out of 10. This is a really clever hidden movement, one versus all game, and I feel like it does certain things that are just different enough from other games in the genre, things like Letters from Whitechapel. It reminds me a little bit of that game, but I think I would actually rather play Mind Management than any of those games, just because I feel like it has some unique twists to it that uh, we talked about in the review. So if you're interested, take a look at that Four Squares review. All right, well, that's it for me this week. Let's keep it moving. Okay, so for me, I took a look at Mint, two Mint games this week. The first is Mint Control, which is honestly, in my opinion, the worst of all the Mint games. It's not very fun at all. It has take that elements, which are really harsh. The scores are low. I just didn't like, oh, and the rule book is atrocious. Then Die of the Dead. I really want to like this game. It has a really cool theme to it. Uh, beautiful components, but the game itself just felt entirely too random. The Rival Networks is a game that's almost what I want it to be. It's, it's a nice two-player version of the networks. It works smoothly. I just feel like I've seen most of the game in just one or two plays. And, you know, each consecutive play doesn't seem to change anything about it. And so I, I fear that it doesn't have a lot of replayability. Um, the Seven Summits is... Uh, also a game, I, I mean, I thought it's very enjoyable and stuff. I thought the board wasn't fantastic. And the push your gloss aspect of it has been done, I think, better by many other games. The other Mint game I've done this week was Mint Cooperative. This one I really enjoy. A little cooperative filler game. It's, you know, a little game you can play between other games. Very simple, short, and for the size of the container, really worth it. Marry the Monster. I did not expect to like this game. An abstract game where you're running this monster around um, trying to smash other people's buildings. Uh, it is, it's quick, it's simple, and it has really nice components. 
Mind Management, all of us reviewed this one together. I really enjoy this game. And other than the fact, the only thing that's keeping it from being higher rating is I'm worried that the game can drag down into some analysis paralysis. But other than that, it's a really cool theme. It's based on the graphic novel. It does a great job bringing that theme to life. And as a one verse all where one person's hiding and everyone else is trying to find them in a way I've never seen it done before. Lawyer Up is in the two-player game. Uh, great theme, back and forth, uh, prosecutor versus defender. It's mostly matching symbols and trying to outthink the other person, but it does so in a way that I really enjoyed. I also started a new series this week where I walked through various shelves in the Dice Tower Library. This is going to be a quite long series as I go through all the shelves, but I went through two of them this week, just a quick rundown of each of the games on those shelves. Also, me, Mike, and Z all together did our top 10 games that are beautiful on the inside. What we mean by that are ugly games, in our opinion, but we also really enjoy them. Uh, we did a live play of Brew from Pandasaurus Games, so you can check that out. Shoots and Marbles, which was on a different day this week than normal. My boring unboxing, crowd surfing, look back, lots of different videos. Hopefully you can find something that you enjoy. And that's what we had on the Dice Tower channel this week. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Week in Review on the Dice Tower.